Hi everyone, my name is Lars. Uh, good to be back at Crisis Mappers. These days I'm working with the uh, UN Institute of Training and Research Operational Satellite Applications Program, otherwise known as uh, UNITAR, UNISAT. Uh, we were founded in 2001, and since 2003, we've been providing on-call humanitarian mapping. We're based out at the CERN Research Facility, the home of the freaky physics and supercomputer stuff, so I can guarantee you we have the best computers in the UN system, and that's not saying much. Uh, <laughs> Generally, uh, we do a lot of imagery for crisis uh, response. We do 40 plus activations per year. We've done 100 plus analytical products this year. We generally use more than 25 sensors. We get Digital Globe's first look and GOI's IQ service to give us high res imagery within 24 hours of certain crisis situations. We deal with both complex emergencies and natural disasters, and the point of this is that we have to be activated under a range of international agreements to do what we do. People get a little nervous when the UN starts pointing satellites lights at them. Um, but I don't want to talk about our usual sensor work. I want to talk about some of our other activities. These are low-cost experimental things of photo georeferencing and large area imagery mosaics. Also want to give a shout out to the GeoPictures project, which we'll be presenting at the tech fair later. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is our photo geotagger. So this was a collaboration with the Citizen Cyber Science Center, and we wanted to overcome a continued lack of georeference photos using the crowd. These georeference photos are very useful, but usually very sparse within a conflict situation. We use these for damage assessment. Uh, they're also helpful for unexploded ordnance removal and maybe missing persons. The photo on the right there is the one inspired it all because it took me an hour to find that location where those trucks were. Um, basically, the system is designed to locate and ingest uh, uh, photographs out on the web, then categorize them, do some basic uh, analysis, and then as much as possible, geotag them to a very specific location on a map. Uh, and this is just a screenshot of the process the crowd goes through. So if you feed it a URL, the system will find pictures within that URL. There was also a Chrome browser extension developed to do it. All aspects can be voted on by the crowd, and then there's an artificial intelligence behind the scenes that checks for duplicates and spam, et cetera. The nifty part is you can also link photos by shared landmarks. So if you see the same building in two photos, you link them. This makes it a game-like system, similar to mem memory, and greatly increases the number of geotagged photos that we, uh, that we end up with. This is the, the map interface where you can actually uh, uh, point the, put the photo to a point. UNOSAT can overlay our own more current imagery. So for example, if you saw that tank in the satellite image, you could just map it straight to the, to the tank in the satellite image. Uh, some of the tricks that we use, obviously, if you're familiar with an area, that's very helpful for georeferencing photos. You can read the article to get clues, maybe contact the photojournalist, the landmarks, and there's also a lot of sun and shadow sort of stuff you can do if you want to get into calculus. Um, if you want to help with this, first of all, let us know, is it legal to take people's photos and do this? Uh, it's an open source project. Feel free to jump in. There's a lot of development opportunities here. We also need users, geotaggers, and testers, and stuff like that. Uh, the second thing I want to talk about is our large area, low resolution imagery mosaics project. So we're interested in looking at areas larger than 100,000 square kilometers at a time. This is a partnership with GIS Corps, and for now we want to know if we can locate possible unknown IDP populations within Somalia. This makes heavy use of free browse imagery that comes out of the Digital Globe and GOI online catalogs and takes advantage of those companies' active targeting. We download and automatically ingest those into our, uh, into our mosaics to make use of. This is just a screenshot showing an example of Horn of Africa, so that's about 200,000 square kilometers of this browse imagery, which has about 16 meter resolution, and then one Landsat image thrown in, indicated by the red box, as we'll be combining all these together. I don't know how well you can see this, but this is kind of a before and after shot showing that you can actually see IDP populations growing in this very low resolution free imagery. Uh, the shot on the right shows more buildings than the left. Uh, this next slide shows the Afguye area. I know a lot of work has been done on that lately, so some of you might be very familiar with this. Again, you can see the actual structures coming up, uh, so we would then point satellites at these locations to get more information, uh, or we would actually purchase this image to get more information on that. So this is going to be likely a very painful visual review gu guided probably by an overlapping grid squares method. Uh, if you want to help with this, again, is it legal? Uh, and any academic info on 
on best methods for crowdsourced imagery analysis. We're always happy to take that. I'll follow up to the Crisis Mappers group to try and engage people in this, especially regarding the photo, photo geotagger. We do try and engage, but we're a really small staff with high stress, so please do contact me to discuss as needed. I'll be drinking heavily here all night, et cetera, et cetera. This is my email. That's our website. Please do go through it. Let me know if you need anything. Thank you.